What's up guys? Welcome back to David's Feed and welcome to part one of our new herping series. Recently, David and I flew out to Spain and quickly began trying to find as much as possible. We find some amazing animals and have some great moments, so stay tuned and enjoy. Let's get started. All right, we're here in the outskirts of southern Marbella tonight. We're actually in some dune coastal habitat. And we're here because earlier this evening I spotted some really unique tracks in the sand and we think we know what they belong to. We're not quite gonna reveal it yet, but we're gonna have a look around and see if we can find this really special animal that we think occurs in this area. Maybe this will never get used, but if you're seeing this, that means that it's worth watching, okay? So let's get cracking, let's go searching. Okay, so there's David up there. And the way, to, the way to spot this really special animal we think might be here is just by shining in like the tops of bushes and in these dunes. All right, so, so far we haven't seen anything, which means our motivation is waning a bit. We keep getting distracted by bright, shiny things like this in the bushes, but we're not giving up. We're gonna keep searching until the night is done. Let's hop this fence and go on these trails here, David. Okay, so me and David have split up on our search to try and get more serious and find what we're looking for. And I think at a distance, that right there is exactly what we are looking for. And I am, I can't believe it. Looking through the camera, I can clearly see that is a little brown baby. That didn't sound right, ignore that. He's finally made his way over here. Alright. You see it? that little thing in there? Oh my god. Holy yes. crap. Alright, so this is the European chameleon and they're very diurnal, so you can see at night they actually sleep. You can see his eyes are closed. When I just gently touch him, he'll probably open those eyes right up. See? Now now the eyes oh, he's are puffing up as well in the defensive. Now the eyes are open. Very small, very cute. I'm gonna see if I can just gently, oh, 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 oh. As a defensive thing they do is when they're threatened at night, they just jump. And um, this is quite a young one as well. This is very small. This one would be almost hatchling size. You can, oh my God, this thing is so ridiculously cute. And this is not as common as they used to be in Spain anymore. They I used heard to be these are quite hard to find. They, they are. They, it's not that they're hard to find, it's that their distribution has been limited so much in recent years that you can only find them in like isolated localities in Andalusia. All right, so this is the special animal you were looking for tonight. This is the European chameleon, chameleo chameleon, or something like chameleon, that. Chameleon chameleon. Yeah, chameleon chameleon in Latin. Um, this is only just like almost hatchling size. They can get really... <laughs> Bit of Boston. Oh, it, they're so amazing at catching themselves as well when yeah, they fall. See, he didn't actually hit the floor. He caught himself on a branch. He somehow like grabbed on with his tail or something and catches hold. They're incredible climbers. The way they curl their tail so beautifully. In that typical chameleon fashion. All right, so let's set this guy back right where we found him and let's try and get a big adult because now we've got the motivation to actually go yeah, the full way. There's for sure gonna be adults around. There has to be. And if you want to grab this sweet Macrops tee that David's wearing in the video, make sure you check out the link in the description. Okay, David says he's just spotted something. Right, so I think I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 80, 85% sure. Right where the tip of my shadow of my finger is. Wait, can, my, can you see my oh, shadow? Oh, all the way over there. I, I was looking closer. Move your shadow away. Yeah, like right deep in. Shine it. your torch in. There, I You're think... right. There is, there's a big adult there. I'm going to go. David's actually spotted one. Let's get it. Show it to me, baby. All right, so this is, I wouldn't say by any means as large as they get, but probably already considered an adult of the European or common chameleon, which is in this area not so common at all. As you can see, he's being quite defensive and he probably won't hesitate to bite. 
Are you gonna bite? Probably not. He can't see, but if you put your finger in his mouth, I suspect. Should I do it? Yeah, do it, please. <laughs> well, this won't harm him at all, but it'll harm me. But as you can see, he doesn't even, he doesn't even want to bite me, so I'm not gonna force him. Be quiet for just two seconds. Let's listen to that hissing. Yeah, he's really, he's really being defensive and making a hissing noise. I don't know how well the camera will pick that up, but it's like, I don't know. It's it sounds like snake like. It sounds demonic. Chameleons time. are just really special to me because, as you may know, I used to grow up in South Africa and we used to get them in my yard. Slightly different species, but very similar. So these are the kind of things I used to grow up catching. So and I haven't found one for many years and actually finding them here in the wild now is very special. And it's like, unfortunately, a lot of the excitement of these actually came off camera before we brought the camera out to film. But I can't understate that when I was talking to David about what we might find on this trip, you said that finding a chameleon would be better to you than most this of the snakes. This is, in my opinion, more exciting than some of the non-venomous snakes we can find here. Just because chameleons are like, they're lizards, but they're so unique in their own way. There's nothing that really compares. Look at that, he's just suspending his body by gripping on my fingers with his two hind legs and his tail. So incredible. Are you gonna bite me? Oh! Oh! Ah. It's actually pretty painful, right? It is relatively painful. They have a strong draw see. pressure. Very, very neat little animals, but they do get stressed quite easily, so I'm just gonna go put this one right back on his tree, and we're gonna see if we can find a bigger one, because they can actually get probably like, what would you say, Rupert, like twice the size of I'd this? I'd say easily twice the size of this one. Let's see if we can get a bigger one. All right. All right, so it's only been like, what, three minutes since no, we turned off? Like the one like one minute. Yeah, like one minute and we've already found another. This one's a little larger. I'm not gonna actually take him out the tree, but I'll put my hand next to him so you can see for size reference. These guys are like one third larger than at least a third larger than the one we just found. Yeah, he is bigger than the previous one, but he's still not like a really large adult size. So we're just gonna let him be. He'll just keep sleeping. But well, let's he just get a closer look at that for a second. We've woken him up, he's sort of nervously looking around. But can you believe, it? oh look at that cute little curled tail. I love chameleons so much. Dude, we've been walking for like, including filming time, we've probably been here about 10 to 15 minutes and we got four already. And when I did research, I saw no records of them from this area. We really wanted to film chameleons on this trip and we thought we'd have to drive like two hours to find them. And here they are. I'm so hyped. <laughs> Unfortunately, we did not find the really big chameleon we were after, but it was still amazing to see several individuals right by where we were staying, where we did not expect them to be. Now, we go back in time about six days to the very beginning of the trip, when we left Marbella and headed out to Granada to begin the quest to find every species of snake in the region. Let's get into it. Yo, what's up guys? So we are... Had a bit of change of scenery. Yeah, definitely for the better though. You may, oh, he's disappeared into the background, but our friend Oscar has come through and taken us out to stay where he is. And we're basically gonna spend the entire week herping up in the Sierra Nevada. I mean, just show the scenery. It's like really, really nice. Yeah, wow. I'm so curious to see what our first snake will be. Because as of yet, we've still not seen a single live snake. I mean, we only got here last yesterday evening to yeah. Spain, but. We're, I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. All right, Oscar, say hello to the camera. Hey. Where, what's the plan of action? Where are we going? Um, we're gonna check this olive plantation, olive tree plantation, to see if we can find some whip snakes. Sounds good to me. Oh, guys, we just went from zero snakes to two in seconds. Look at the color. Yeah. It's Turkish. Can, Jay, can you explain what this one is? So this is an Iberian grass snake. And Which was this common in Natrix Arithophora. Has a red and eyes. We've been told they're very rare. Yeah, this is one of the rarest snakes you get in this region. It was one we said we wanted to target because of how uncommon they are. And David, what have you got I in the background? I've got a small viperine snake. Which uh, is a lifer for me. Yeah, I've found them before. Which is Natrix Maura. Natrix Maura. So two species of Natrix around this pond and we were just flipping these stones here. He was telling me we we're gonna find uh, mole crickets underneath and then we find one of our main targets we had for this and two snakes out of nowhere 
so bad. The, I had no oh idea. god, I smell it. I had no idea. So there is adults here. Yeah, that's and that's amazing. not the smallest one I've ever seen. It's not a big one by any stretch. It's just a sub adult from last know. year, probably. Yeah. But I don't know how well it comes up, but they have an amazing green pattern with that speckling. So different from the sort of uh, grass snake relatives we get in our area, you know. And the red eyes, you don't get Try and hold it north. still. And I'll... Oh, yeah, I see that. Really cool. And let me get a look at that. Where did you, did you find that just on the crawl? I flipped it. You flipped that as well? Yeah. We just flipped these couple stones there. And you just, I, I saw a snake underneath. You recognized it instantly. And wow. I was tripping balls. It's the fourth of my entire life, so they're pretty rare here. And I mean, these are pretty common, but uh, we weren't super sure we were going to see one because uh, the pond is quite dry. <laughs> so this is just a juvenile. They get about this, this large. This one's very small and they're called viperine snake because at first glance they do at least a little bit resemble the viper. But of course these are just a completely harmless colubrid. And it's so similar to the um, one we saw in Germany. Yeah, very similar to the dice snake. But not. These ones do, I mean, sometimes they look more viper like this one doesn't really. When they get bigger, they get a bit more stout and their head is probably a bit more distinct. But like I said, this is a lifer and we're out here late, late afternoon in this beautiful valley just near um, Oscar's house. And we've had a very, very successful first day. All right, so we're gonna hold on to the grass snake for a minute because we're gonna take some more photos, but this one, we're pretty sure we're gonna find loads more. So we're just gonna let this one go right back under this rock where I found it. Bye-bye. Sweet. All right, so we're back here at the same spot where we caught this uh, Natrix Astraptophora the other night. Um, we held on to it for a night because it's really rare, probably one of the rarest snakes you can get here even, so we didn't have our cameras on us at the time. So we got some really good shots and now we're going to let it go right here in the exact same spot. These are really cool because you can see the collar is green instead of the typical yellow of other grass snakes. And they have this really beautiful black and greenish blotched venter. Yeah. And what's very special for these is that they have the red eyes and this is just a juvenile when they get bigger they will lose this color a little bit and be like a bluish green and they do get quite big they get well over a meter yeah ready to let him go yeah sure just put him down like here and I was let thinking me film just to let him here and cruise off into the anywhere into, as long as into I can the get reeds it. Go on video let him go Yep, and there he goes really fast now. Oh, you can still see him in there. Oh, there he is. And he's going under that big rock. Back to the car. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. And a massive shout out to our patrons, whose names you can see on screen right now. We appreciate you a lot. And make sure you guys tune in for the next episode. Like the video, comment, and do all that. We'll see you soon. Peace.